Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer Sheehan. I would love to hear from you. Go to the Jennifer Sheehan Show.com, hit YouTube. You'll be able to see this show, and we would love to hear your questions and comments. Today's show is going to be on forgiveness. Matthew 6 14. For if you forgive men their, tras their trespasses, your Father will also forgive you your trespasses. I'd love to introduce you to Jenna Quinn. Hi, Jenna. So glad to have you with us today. Hi, Jennifer. So happy to be here. So tell me, tell me your story. Tell me, how old were you? So I am a child sexual abuse survivor, and um, most of this abuse started uh, when I was a preteen. And it lasted for several years, and I finally made my outcry when I was 16 years old to my older wow. sister. Wow. So um, what finally gave you the strength to go ahead and tell somebody? So my older sister um, asked me, she could tell that I had changed in every way possible. Um, you know, I went from making good grades to failing, from being outgoing to very withdrawn. And she asked me, she said, has anyone ever hurt you? And uh, what a very simple question it was. Um, and I just, I gave her an answer without saying a single word. I just broke down into uncontrollable tears. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, she knew I, I gave her an answer without saying anything. Right. So you were so young. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. Wasn't it a friend of the family, someone you trusted? Yes. Over 90% of the time, a child is sexually abused by someone that they know and trust. And so this was a very close family friend and also played the role of a basketball coach in my life. And, um, you know, unfortunately with this crime, it's estimated that two thirds of children um, don't tell. And if they do, they wait. And so many reasons for that, but mainly there's shame and um, isolation and many children feel they won't be believed. Wow. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a very um, unfortunate thing, but there is always hope there's always healing when we can trust God with our pain. Right, so what type of healing, what process did you go through once you told your sister? So, you know, once, once I told my sister, we told my parents and went through the whole trial, the whole court process. Um, right. I'm very grateful that the jury gave my uh, perpetrator 70 years in prison. Wow, and so I, 70 years? 70 years, and wow. I'm very grateful to have received justice. Right. Um, but really, my healing accelerated when I was able to you know, reestablish my relationship with Christ. And instead of hiding from him, instead of running from him, instead of having those walls of self-protection built up, um, I, I decided to run to him instead to heal me through my pain. I love that. I love that you, I mean, with the Lord, he's the only one with the supernatural power to heal you and help you, right? Yes, we cannot fix ourselves. <laughs> we can't. As much Why as do we, we want to try, can? I know. <laughs> as much as we want to try and say, right. I can contain this, I can manage this, I can cope with this. Um, you know, we're not meant to carry this on our own. We're not meant to heal ourselves. Right. I'm so glad that you were brave enough to tell somebody because uh, when I was young, something not as bad as what happened to you, but it could have been as bad. And it was uh, also a friend of the family at a restaurant and he called us all in the back and we felt comfortable. And he giving us suckers, asking us, um, where do you live? What school do you go to? And I felt comfortable because my parents knew him yes. and he gave me five suckers. <laughs> and then he said, you have some spaghetti on your zipper. And then he put his hands down my pants. And um, I was probably 10 and I was mortified and I didn't know what to do. And then I left, thank God, he didn't have the time to do as much to me as I'm sure he would have liked to. And then my mom said, you can't have five suckers, take them back. And I'm like, I am not <laughs> going back in there. No. So I gave the suckers to somebody else. And then my sister said, if you don't give me your sucker, I'm telling mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to give up my sucker on top of that. But you oh know, I didn't God. tell my mom until I was 18 and out of the house because I was so embarrassed. And you know, the worst part about that that I'll never forget is that I am sure he was a child molester. I'm sure he did a lot more to people than just put his hands down my pants. And I feel so guilty that I wasn't strong enough to tell somebody because I'm sure he did worse to others. Yeah, I, many times these perpetrators have several victims and they're very strategic and very manipulative and they know how to get children alone, how to groom children, how to groom their families on gaining access and gaining trust into their lives. Right. So we shouldn't feel bad when we're 10 or so young like that. That's exactly right. And feel right. like we don't have the strength to tell somebody. 
and, and children are targeted. And it's so important for victims, survivors, to know that they did not do anything wrong. Wow. So <laughs> in the next segment that we're going to talk about um, how you've been able to move on um, and what you've been able to do to help people. And um, I'm just amazed by you. When I first met you, I met you at an event and I just felt that we had a connection right away and had yes. no clue I was going to have you on the show. No clue. And yeah. what you had been through, I just met you and right away, it's like we had this, this sister in Christ connection that yes. I just love, just the light in your eyes. Like I know that you're using this platform for the Lord and I, I absolutely love that about you. And I can't even imagine that pain and, and what you've had to go through. Um, just the shame and the pain. And I just don't think anyone should have to go through that. So what are some of the signs um, that parents or teachers, what are some of the signs um, that they know that something's going on? So there are lots of different warning signs. Um, sometimes they're displayed differently through genders. Um, girls are, you know, unfortunately um, looking for changes in behavior. So anything okay. that's a sudden change in behavior um, is most likely a sign. So if someone is outgoing and then they become withdrawn and depressed, make good grades, um, start failing, or you know, do well in sports and then um, lose their focus and can't right. concentrate any longer. Wow. So those are some great signs for us all to be looking for. Um, I, can't, I just can't imagine how you felt after that because that abuse went on for a long time. You know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. and destroy. And I think really with this crime, sexual abuse, child sexual abuse, you are a child, so your innocence is stolen. Right. Um, your spirit is destroyed. And, you know, your relationship with, with other people, sometimes your relationship with God, um, that is also um, destroyed as well, can be. Um, and so in one moment, all of these things, spirit, mind, and body are um, destroyed. Right. On our next segment, we're going to be right back with Jenna, and we're going to talk about how God has used her to make a difference in other children's lives. We'll be right back on The Jennifer Sheehan Show. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. I'm happy to announce that the Jennifer Sheehan TV show is now officially a 501c3 nonprofit. So far, this show has been funded by me personally, but cost of production for a TV show is extensive, and I could use your support. To donate to the Jennifer Sheehan show, go to thejennifersheehanshow.com. The Jennifer Sheehan show is about real people with real stories of pain and joy and overcoming and redemption. Some of these shows have been so amazing. Like one guest, his um, family actually was held up in their house. They were bound and gagged. They were uh, raped and shot and left for dead. And after all of that, God gave my guest the power of the Holy Spirit in him to forgive. That type of forgiveness is so inspiring. Another one of our guests um, completely healed from cancer. Um, all of these guests coming on are sharing these stories to inspire and give you hope. I know God gave me this show. God is the owner of this show. He owns this show. I am just the host. 
and we're doing this to inspire and give hope and lead people to the Lord. Again, the website is thejennifersheehanshow.com. Welcome back to The Jennifer Sheehan Show, and we're gonna talk some more with this beautiful lady next to me. And mm -hmm. I want to know, Jenna, um, what you've been able to do to make a difference using this tragedy that happened to you to make a difference in other people's lives. So my favorite verse is Genesis 50, 20, and it's when Joseph is talking to his brothers, and he says, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good so that many lives would be saved as they are being saved today. <laughs> and so that scripture really speaks Love to me it. because such an injustice that Joseph suffered, right? right? And that's what sexual abuse is. I mean, the shame, the blame, the fear, the guilt um, is unbearable so many times for, for survivors. And um, in 2009, uh, we went into political action um, seeking for change in the school systems to prevent and recognize and report training teachers and students about this crime specifically because it's a silent crime. Right. It's unlike physical abuse where you're going to see physical signs on a child if um, they have bruises or maltreatment. Um, this is more of, you know, indicators, behavioral emotional indicators that will be shown. And so um, in 2009, Governor Perry signed Jenna's Law named after me. Yay! Um, and now it's model legislation in uh, 29 states that, you know, requires the school system to uh, train their teachers on recognizing and reporting and train students on body safety and um, giving them that opportunity to tell and make I an love outcry. that. So you're telling me you got a law named after you, girl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? Um, it's, it's extremely humbling. Mm. And, you know, it, it all goes back to God's glory being displayed in our pain and in our weakness and in our, our, our worst moments in life imaginable. Right. He wants to come in and resurrect that and um, not just bring restoration to our lives, right. but um, to other people's lives as well, all for his glory. Right, I love that you are using this horrible tragedy to help others, that you actually got a law passed that you're showing signs so that people can help others because we don't always know how or what the signs are. And then also you speaking, so that's how I met you, speaking yeah. at a nonprofit, and you did such a great job, by the way. Oh, I was like, that's my new friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just did such a great job to build awareness. Um, and then you have a book too, so you wrote a book as well? I do, I wrote a book, it is faith-based, it's called Pure in Heart. Um, and so I talk about that because, you know, it's a violation of um, not just your soul, but physically you're violated. And how does a young girl or a young boy see themselves as pure after that violation? And so oh, I address wow. those. I have a prayer in forgiveness um, in the book, the prayer that I prayed to forgive. Um, yeah. So that's in Pure in Heart as well. And um, you can find that on my website. It's jennaquinn.org or right. Amazon and Barnes and Nobles as well. I love that. I'm so proud yeah. to be your new friend. <laughs> I'm excited and you're so, my new friend as well. Thank you. Just Sisters so, in Christ. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I love um, powerful women that are able to take that tragedy and what happened to them and turn it around and make it into other people's good and uh, most of all for His glory. And I know that God is so proud of you as well because you've just really been able to turn things around. And what a great example to young girls that uh, might be in the same situation that you're able to come on a TV show, get up and speak, have a book, telling them that it's okay that they feel the way they felt, um, that it's normal, um, but there's hope. Yes. There's hope in Jesus that he can change you and then he can turn around and use you. Yes, That is just so much hope. I have goosebumps just saying it because <laughs> I think it's, it's so amazing that you've been able to do that. Well, thank you. So isn't that just feel so empowering to you too that you're able to use such a tragedy and turn that around? It does, it, it really does. And um, you know, it, God is no respecter of persons. We know this, he wants this for every single child of his and he sees the pain that you have, right. um, the struggles that you have gone through, the tears that you've cried in your bed at night, he sees that and he wants to come in and restore your life. And that's what he does, right? right. He resurrects what he and does. he heals, he redeems and he restores. And so um, he is trustworthy, he is dependable, but we have to let ourselves 
bring those walls down because sometimes we build walls against other people, right? We have self-defense right. mechanisms, True. especially with this crime, it's so common. Um, and sometimes we build those walls against the father as well. Um, and so letting him in. Letting him in is the key. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming and being so brave and sharing your story. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, don't go away. Next, we have on a young lady that has actually um, been brought up in the New York projects and then uh, moved to California and was held by gunpoint with two men and raped. And so we'll come back and talk about her story. God told me 12 years ago to write a book of my life story. I said, no way. One, I don't want to put my painful past out to the public. Two, I'm a horrible speller. And three, I don't have the desire of time. He kept weighing on my heart and telling me if it leads one person to him, if it inspires one person, am I willing to do it then? And my answer was yes. I started writing the book of my life story, Painful Victories. Painful Victories is about me being born and raised in Southern California to a bipolar, alcoholic, pill-popping mother that was married six times. My mother mentally and physically abused me my whole life. I also joined the United States Army out of high school, spent four years in the Army, one year in Iraq, weapons specialist, and just went through so much in my past. My mom sent me to church camp in seventh grade where I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He became my everything and he's always been enough. I wrote this book to lead people to Jesus and to inspire them. I want to share my story with you to give you that hope that if God can do this through me, he can do this through anyone. You don't wanna miss this amazing story of hope. You can purchase the book for $14.99 at thejennifersheehanshow.com. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I would love to introduce you to my friend, Lisa Cooper. Hi, Lisa. Hi there. So happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, girl, so you were born in the New York Projects. Mm -hmm. Buffalo, New York. And your, hus or your um, father, who was your father? My father was Richard Shaw, and he was part of Rick James and the Stone City Band. He was the guitarist. Wow, that's yeah. very cool. So you had a superstar as a father? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you show me the album cover. Yeah. <laughs> you text it to me. I'm like, very cool. Yeah. So what religion was your father? Um, he was Pentecostal and then he became Jehovah Witness. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And so then he moved you guys um, from New York to California. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, when I was about 12 years old, yeah, and my sister was 13 at the time. and. Um, we went from rich to poor and poor to rich. <laughs> really? Yep, back and forth. Wow, so what happened to you when you were in California and how old were you? Um, are you referring to? In the Griffin the Park? Uh, the incident. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I was raped by two men at gunpoint and um, they were Caucasian and I made up in my mind when they were driving away to forgive them immediately. Wow. Um, because I didn't want to live with that. And my father had taught me to forgive. And that was the wonderful thing about my father was always into positive thinking. So right. um, he taught us to forgive. And that's something that everybody needs to have 
and I was grateful for that. So Right, and being raped by two Caucasian men, so that didn't give you any hard feelings towards Caucasian men? No, because I married a Caucasian man. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, no, absolutely not. No, if you forgive, you forgive 100%. And so I love that. And since this whole that. show today is about forgiveness, that's incredible that you were able to forgive after mm -hmm. something so horrific and of all places at a park and by gunpoint. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that and so happy that you were able to get past that. Yes, that's the incidences in life is what makes you strong, you know, so. I think of the scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, you know, where the Lord tells us to be courageous and to be strong. And so if he tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. So right. I consider myself a strong person. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had two different religions behind you. So you had Christianity on one side and then you had Jehovah Witness on the other side mm -hmm. with your grandmother, you said. Uh -huh. Your grandmother was a Christian. And then uh, tell us about um, when you went into the hospital when you were bleeding. Well, I had surgery and they couldn't stop the bleeding. And um, I swelled up really big. I mean, it was huge pulmonary edema. And um, they said they had to do the surgery again. And um, I had to have blood transfusion. And as a Jehovah Witness, you don't believe in blood transfusion. So no blood transfusion when you're Jehovah Witness. Right. Wow. Right. So that conflict was there. So you just die? <laughs> Okay. You I like pray, mine better. You pray to live. I, I like being a Christian better. No, go ahead. Sorry. You pray to live. But um, yeah, and so the Heavenly Father told me to get up and have my usual cup of tea with him, and I did. And yeah, I, he told me I was healed. And so I told him I had to leave. Wow. <laughs> So you just get up and you're like, okay, I'm healed. God told me I healed and I'm going to leave. Well, the next day, all the labs came back and said, yeah, she's, she's ready to go. And so the doctor said, there's no reason for us to keep you. So I left. Wow. Yeah, he healed me completely. So when did that conflict finally change where you just became a Christian and, and, and stayed with that faith versus being a Jehovah Witness in such a conflict? When did, it, when did you just really become a Christian and know that that was the faith that you were going to go with? when the Heavenly Father visited me and told me in my sewing room that I was no longer going to the Kingdom Hall. And um, I says, well, if that's the case, Lord, you're going to have to go in the media room and tell my husband, you know, because uh, he Because you made know him convert, this. right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey, I changed my mind. Yeah, we're no longer doing this you know, wow. after 17 years, you know. But um, yeah, it was an eye-opening experience to, for me, audibly hear the, the Holy Spirit tell me that I was no longer to go to the Kingdom Hall, and so I chose to listen, and I'm glad I did. Wow, yeah. which changed your whole life, because mm -hmm. now you've been married how long? Uh, 28 years. And how many children? Four. And four children. Girl, you look good for having four children. <laughs> so, and four children, too. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, you shared with me something that um, you, you work on people. You're an esthetician, and you have mm -hmm. them on your table a lot. And what did you share with me? Do you remember? when you said that you run into so many people that are just so broken and hurt and so forth, and that you're just so surprised that you're not, that you're just so full of joy. Ever since I've known you, you've been so happy and, yeah. and so full of joy. Yes. Why do you think you feel that way? I think when you know the Father and you have that relationship with Him, you know, I was flying, I came back from El Paso, I'll tell you real quickly, El Paso and my I was looking at all the little houses and the little people, and I'm like, Lord, is this how you see us? We have such little problems, but we're, when the, the plane was descending, everything seemed so big, you know, and it started getting bigger and bigger, and I was like, hmm, it isn't that big after all, you know? <laughs> right. So, but with my patients, I just tried to um, witness to them, you know, and let them know, dude, it's, it's this little in the scheme of things. We right. can handle anything. Our God is so big, you know. Right. You know, my favorite thing is to say, I'm not going to tell God how big my problems are. I tell my, my problems how big my God is. Exactly. Exactly. But I find, I have joy in finding peace and finding things to be excited about, you know, as opposed to the opposite, you know. People right. are like, darn, this is happening. I'm like, yay. 
I love so you, <laughs> another challenge. So you're cute. So you just look at it as a challenge. Absolutely. So you know, God doesn't say if, he says when we will be we will have trials and tribulations be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. And I don't think most of us feel that way with trials and tribulations. So that that's actually a great perspective that you're sharing with us to look forward to those and look at them as a challenge because yeah. what God's doing is using those trials and tribulations to build our character and make yes. us stronger. Yes. Without if nothing ever happened to us we wouldn't be who we are today. We right. wouldn't be the strong women we are today, you know? So I'm so proud of you, girl. Thank you so much for coming Thank on my you. show and sharing this. I just appreciate you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. So we're gonna go to a quick break and when we come back, I'm going to share how I was able to forgive my mother for mentally abusing me my whole life. It took me to about 46 years old before I was able to truly forgive her. And I'll tell you why when we come right back. It takes a village to raise a kid and change the world. But today, we are more disconnected than ever. Computers and games. On demand TV. Today, we are isolated behind screens. But our children still have the same problems. No self-esteem, no social skills, and lack of grit. As a teacher, the most difficult challenge we face is to teach kids who see no value in education. Ethos Village is a digital tool that engages kids, parents, and teachers. Giving the group engaging tools to help kids build life skills. Ethos Village is designed by teachers for teachers. So we can engage parents and kids in a fun and entertaining environment. And this great curriculum is highlighted by experienced parents, professional athletes, and celebrities that tell the real life stories. Stories of struggle and success. That show kids, parents, and teachers. The sky's the limit. Visit www.ethosvillage.com. Join the village, Ethos Village. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. My mother mentally and physically abused me my whole life. And it was something that was really hard to get past. I went through a lot of Christian counseling, but the bottom line is, is that only the power of God could change me and heal me. If you've not prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. Forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are now saved if you prayed that prayer with me. So um, I can't wait to talk to you guys next week and give you some more powerful stories. Thank you for joining me on The Jennifer Sheehan Show.